Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to react to a new trailer of a movie that's being made called Cessationist. They just raised $100,000 to make this movie, and I want to react to the trailer in this video. If you don't know what cessationism is, it's the idea that the gifts were given, but have now ceased once the apostles died out. There's no longer the giving of prophecy. There's no more speaking in tongues. Miracles, they'll say, happen today, but God doesn't use people to perform miracles any longer. So basically, the supernatural activity of God through people is no longer around. And majority of cessationists say there's no prophets, there's no apostles, there's only pastors, teachers, and evangelists. So let's talk about this. It's a it's a false doctrine. It's a false teaching. It's not in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where the Bible teaches cessationism. And one thing these guys pride themselves on is being Bible knowledgeable, Bible scholars, yet they teach a doctrine that's nowhere found in scripture. So I'm going to give you my reaction. I thought about when I asked Dr. Michael Brown, what's the best argument for cessationism? And he said, there is none. There's no good arguments because there's no cessationism in the Bible. The gifts have not ceased. They're continuing on. Let's react to this. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's react to this trailer. By the way, I'm not doing a breakdown of cessationism. I have a video disproving cessationism on the channel. We did it as a podcast. So I'm not going to give all these arguments and stuff, but this, this trailer, it frustrates me because it's filled with straw man arguments and things we as charismatics don't even believe. And if you don't know what a charismatic is, it's someone that believes the gifts are continuing. A continuationist, charismatic, we believe in the charismata, the first Corinthians chapter 12, the nine gifts that Paul lists there. We believe those are all active today because that's what the Bible teaches. That's why we believe it because the Bible teaches it. But we're gonna go through these and we're gonna break down some of these arguments. And I'll just give you my honest reaction, no notes, just giving you what the Bible says and what I believe and what I've seen preaching 12 years now in charismatic Pentecostal non-denominational churches and seeing thousands healed thousands delivered and the power of God moving today so let's react to this I'm not gonna be petty I'm not gonna be rude I'm gonna be respectful in this but let's watch this together if somebody has the gift of miraculous healing surely all he needs to do is to prove it but let's face it we've been battling with COVID and the so-called miracle workers went into hiding together with us. Okay, so he said two things. If you have the gift of healing or the miraculous power, and they always say this, this is such a straw man. They say, go into a hospital and empty it out. Then I see this in the comments of all the cessationist YouTubers that call us out as false teachers. And the reality is no charismatic or Pentecostal that I know thinks the gift of healing works where you just on command all, every time you pray for someone, they get healed. We pray and believe, and it's God's power through us that heals those that are sick. So none of us believe it's 100%. None of us believe we have this magic power that we can go and empty out hospitals. But here's the thing. If a hospital called me and said, hey, Isaiah, we want you to come pray for every person in the hospital, and they let me, legally let me come in, I would go and sit there for hours praying for every single person. And we do go to hospitals and do hospital visits and pray for the sick. And I've watched people come out of the ICU after God divinely healed them. So this is a straw man argument. Even if you, let's just look at Jesus, John 5. Jesus goes to a pool of Bethesda. There's thousands of sick people and he heals one person. So even this idea that we're going to empty out hospitals is not even biblical. Jesus healed one person at the pool of Bethesda. If you look at Matthew 15, 38, the Bible says he did not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. Some translations say he only did a few miracles because they had unbelief. Maybe cessationists aren't seeing miracles because they don't believe that God does miracles today through people. Mark 6, 5. Some of you are going to call me blasphemous, so I'm going to read this word for word. Now he, being Jesus, could do no mighty work there except he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. So the Bible says in Mark 6, 5, Jesus couldn't do miracles there except a few because they had unbelief. That's why. So what do you do with Matthew 15, Mark 6? It's, it's just this idea that we can go in the hospitals. Okay, second thing was, he said during COVID, which I won't say the word because I'll get flagged, all of us were in hiding with them. No, we weren't. I preached at many charismatic and Pentecostal churches all through the pandemic. I was still preaching and teaching and traveled to these churches. And I know many charismatic churches that stayed open through the entire pandemic. So again, another false statement. False statement one, go into hospitals and prove it. The Bible never says we have to prove the gifts. That's not scriptural. And then straw man number two is we hid with you in COVID. We didn't hide. You guys were the ones hiding. All, I know a ton of Pentecostal and charismatic churches that were fully open through the entire pandemic. So again, get some charismatics on here to give their opinion because these are all one-sided. These are all, I'm just warning you, empty arguments here. 
Cessation and this is the trailer. I don't want to be too hard on them. This is the trailer, not the full movie. They just raised their $100,000 for the movie, but this is a trailer. But I think the trailer is supposed to be what the movie's about, and if these are the arguments they're given... It's the view that uh, certain miraculous gifts that stood as signs of an apostle, speaking in tongues, healing, prophecies, interpretation of tongues, gifts like that, ceased with the apostles. So he says the sign gifts, which is not even in the Bible. The Bible doesn't talk about sign. It doesn't say sign gifts. That's man-made. I've seized with the apostles. But here's the problem. There were people that weren't prophets or apostles that functioned in the gifts. There was many believers that spoke in tongues that weren't prophets or apostles. Many believers that prayed for the sick that weren't prophets or apostles. Many people saw miracles that weren't prophets and, and apostles. So again, cessationism has fallen out of favor because commitment to the authority of scripture has fallen out of favor. So cessationism has fallen out of favor because the, what did he say? Hold on, let me rewind it. Let me watch this one more time. Here we go. Commitment to the authority of scripture has fallen out of favor. Oh, commitment to the authority of scripture has fallen out of favor. So the reason why people know, the reason why cessationism's dying is what he's claiming is because people are no longer looking at scripture as authority. That's, uh, that's not true. Every church I preach in, I preach in over 500. I've preached over 1500 times. All the churches I've been to that are Pentecostal, charismatic, non-denominational, they all believe in the authority of scripture and they all commit to the authority of scripture. We're all sola scriptura. We all believe that scripture is divinely inspired, that it is the word of God and that's what we live by. And it ha definitely has not fallen out of favor. Now, I would say a lot of people don't live the scripture, but I don't know one Christian that says, I don't believe in the authority of scripture. When you turn on Christian TV, you don't see expositors of scripture. John MacArthur or Steve Lawson, you see Joel Osteen, Joseph Prince, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, Paula White. That's who you see because that's the mainstream. So he says, because you see all these people like Paula White, Joel Osteen, all of them on TV, that's the mainstream. That's what people want to see. Wrong. Those are the people paying to be on TV. The reason why you're on TV, and I've been on Christian television before, is you pay a high amount of money to be on Christian television. And these guys that are on TV are not going to invite cessationists on. They're not going to invite cessationists to be on. So Christian television is a, is a private thing. You pay to be on television. You pay to be on a channel. Again, I'm not going to go into the details of Christian television, but that's the reason why these people are on because they're willing to pay the money to be on. And any cessationist or popular people that teaches just doctrine could pay to be on. But I'm going to tell you later why they're not on television and why it is dying. Speaking in tongues, you're going to speak out of your spirit. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Our understanding of speaking in tongues must be guided by the scriptures, not our feelings. They were known languages that were capable of interpretation and not everybody speaks in tongues. So known languages, that wasn't always the case. The Bible talks about tongues of angels and the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, if I speak in an unknown tongue or a, to a, a spiritual tongue, no one understands me but God. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 14. So again, debunked. If tongues were a known language, why in 1 Corinthians 14 is Paul saying, no one understands my tongue but God? If I'm praying in the spirit and the spirit is speaking mysteries, only God can understand me. So no tongues were not only known languages, although they were at times. Secondly, he says not everybody speaks in tongues. I have a whole video on that, so I won't go into that debate, but I'm going to leave that alone. If God speaks, it must be. Paul does say, I want all of you to speak in tongues. Just, I'll leave it there. Infallible, inerrant, and authoritative. And the Lord said. God speaks must be infallible, inerrant, and in, uh, authoritative. We believe that. I agree with this guy. Of course, every time God speaks. But what he's trying to say is prophecy is no longer around, which this is titled prophecy here, because if we prophesy and speak for God, then it takes away from his word. No, it doesn't. The Bible says in John that not everything is in the word of God and God still speaks today. But what person have you ever been in a relationship with that doesn't speak? So yes, God speaks through his word and God speaks through people still today, regardless of what the man-made false doctrine you've created that says God no longer speaks. Said to me, will you howl for me? I said, don't ask me to do that, Lord. They're going to show some really dramatic, charismatic stuff, which I don't agree with any of this stuff shown. And I've never done any of this stuff. And the churches I go to don't do any of this stuff. So, of course, they have to take the extremes of charis the charismatic movement and use it. But this, this is p a poor representation of the charismatic movement because we don't do this and we don't believe this just because a few movements have seen these manifestations or believe them. I don't believe in biking like a dog. I've spoke against that many, many times. <laughs> So, and I think showing these things where people are barking like dogs and stuff are actually hurting themselves because true charismatics are going to write this documentary off because they're showing this as 
representation of the charismatic movement, which is completely false. <laughs> I mean, I don't no agree with that. The need for the gift of prophecy, speaking forth divine revelation from God. We have. There's no longer a need. Yes, there is. People still need to hear from God today. We have now the whole counsel of God. This word is the final word. I agree. It's the final word. But that doesn't negate the fact that you can still see signs, wonders, and miracles. And you know, one thing that's crazy to me is they say us charismatics are only by we only live by experience but they live by a lack of experience we live by experience and experiencing the word of god in power you live by the fact you haven't experienced the word of god in power today supernaturally as a reason to believe what you believe and our doctrines in scripture i could point to you over and over where jesus cast out demons i can point to you over and over again where the bible talks about spiritual gifts and i'll give you verses after and god talks about the supernatural and living in it you can't point to one single verse that says the gifts have ceased so i don't know the apostolic gifts of god they were never intended for our generation we have everything that they were never intended for our generation that's not in the bible they remember, and I want you guys to remember this. These are not the gifts of the apostles. These are the gifts of the spirit. So they didn't start with the apostles. They say, well, the gifts died when the apostles died. No, they didn't. They didn't start with the apostles and they didn't die with the apostles. They're spiritual gifts, not apostolic gifts. That we so. need from the Holy Spirit today. It's hard to get anyone who's gone through that to come back and take a serious look at faith in Christ focused on the gospel rather than focused on these phony miracles and that's a bold statement to say phony miracles Ugh, feels bad and they also say like you know everyone speaking in tongues is faking it it's like oh hundreds of millions of people are faking it it's just arrogant to say that so i'm going to tell you why because their their claim is cessationism is dying i'm going to tell you why cessationism is dying because nobody wants to hear what god isn't doing everything cessationists teach is all about what god isn't doing charismatics preach about what god is doing and people don't want to hear god isn't moving anymore like that's your sermons god isn't doing miracles anymore there's no prophecy anymore there's no casting out demons anymore well i'm like where did the demons go they're still sick people we still need it so again these these statements are just completely false these are spiritual gifts not apostolic gifts first corinthians 12 31 earnestly desire spiritual gifts now they say don't desire spiritual gifts the problem they only desire jesus and only pursue jesus the problem is the jesus we desire and pursue tells us to pursue spiritual gifts first corinthians 14 1 pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts especially that you would prophesy first corinthians 14 12 so with yourself since you're eager for the manifestations of the spirit strive to excel in building up of the church first corinthians 14 39 so my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy and uh, prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues so this is what Paul is saying. Now, they say the sign gifts were only given to confirm the message because scripture wasn't complete. Mark 16, 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere and the Lord working with them confirmed his word with signs and wonders. So they say, now that we have the Bible, we don't need signs and wonders. So really, unbelievers don't need signs anymore? You don't need people to believe the message. Now that we have the Bible, go tell an unbeliever, here's the Bible, believe it. And many of them won't. In John 10, Jesus said, if you don't believe me, believe the signs and wonders and know that I'm in the Father and the Father that is in me. So again, over and over, empty arguments, straw man arguments. So they're raising $100,000 for this movie, okay? $100,000. Here's what blows my mind. They always say, oh, charismatics are asking for money. First of all, all these guys' pages that do YouTube, they all have Patreons. They all have ads on their videos and they're all making money. So regardless of what they want to say, these false teachers ask for money. They're making money off of this as well. It's not just people that ask or have Patreons because they all have Patreons. They all have donations and they say, well, we don't talk about it much, but they still have them there. Second of all, they raise $100,000 for the film, which is totally fine. It costs money to make films. And I'm not against asking for money or raising money, but don't have all these guys on that are against asking for money and then ask for $100,000 for a movie. Here's the double standard. It's okay for them to ask for money. It's just not okay for us to ask for money because we're prosperity, charismatic preachers that, you know, aren't preaching the real word of God. All my charismatic and Pentecostal friends, and I'm in the world of charismatic and Pentecostals, they all believe in scripture. They all have a love and fear for God. They all preach repentance. They all preach the full counsel of God. They all preach the cross. Every main issue they preach, yet you guys say, and they sell strange fire t-shirts on their website, 
that we have strange fire, we are weird, we're this. I would rather have strange fire than have no fire. I would rather be weird and see miracles happen, see God today. I'm telling you right now, maybe you're a cessationist watching this. God is alive and well. We've seen thousands of miracles. People get healed, people get delivered, people get changed. And your idea that, oh, cessationism dying, it's dying and charismatics or movement is growing because the Holy Spirit's growing it. Let me just say this last thing. The Holy Spirit is growing the charismatic movement. That's why it's growing and gaining favor. And the cessationist movement is dying because it's dry, it's dead, and it tells what God doesn't do instead of what God does do. I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm not trying to be mean here. It's just the truth. It is a false doctrine. The Bible doesn't teach it. And that's like subjective. The Bible doesn't teach it. Um, it's not up for debate. I mean, that's objective, not subjective. That's like objectively, the Bible doesn't teach cessationism. Go watch a debate with cessationists. They don't have any backing. They make up, oh, the, you know, the apostles came, the foundation came, and that which is perfect has come, which is Jesus, not the scriptures. And one day we will see Jesus face to face, and there will be no need for tongues. There will be no need for prophecy. There's no need to cast out demons in heaven. There's no need to do miracles when Jesus comes. There's no need to prophesy or to speak in tongues because he's come. He's here. I hope this video helped you. I want to shed light on some of these empty straw man arguments here and just, uh, talk to you guys a bit about this. What do you think? What do you think about this documentary? Let me know down below in the comments. What do you think about this trailer? I'd love to hear your opinion. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. If you want a monthly partner, you can down below. If you want to sign to the broadcast, you can down below. We'll see you guys live Monday, Tuesday, Friday at six o'clock Pacific. See ya. God bless.